Hey guys and welcome back to another Star Stable video and on today's video we are going to talk about everything new in the game this week and also about some pretty cool news of what is coming up next Wednesday and let me tell you guys it's going to be mermaid-tastic. That word doesn't even exist but whatever, now it does. For those of you that have been waiting for my next quest video, part 6 of Saving Anne will be live on Saturday, so stay tuned for that. I know that it's taking a while to complete that and to be honest, this is the longest questline that I have done so far. I already have part 7, 8 and 9 filmed and I don't think I am saving Anne so soon, so yeah, it's a long questline. Just a quick heads up guys, if you hear any weird noises in the background while I'm filming, that's my cat. I think he knows whenever I am filming and he enjoys staying with me and every now and then he jumps on top of my laptop. And now I am rumbling, so without further ado, let's just start today's video. This week on Star Stables we have a new race and updated shops. And the new race is at Starshine Ranch. If you've been having fun with the races over at Starshine Ranch, we have good news. Now you have yet another one to try. In this speedy race designed by our own pro rider Josh, you need all your skills to combine quick turns and some jumping. Just like with all the other races in the paddock, you are able to play either alone or alongside an opponent. In my honest opinion, it's really cool to see that the Star Stable team is taking such good care of the new ranch. Pretty much every week we have a big update on it, with new tag, horses, races, quests with Mary and the gold rush game, and of course let's not forget about the western dance floor. So this is one of my favorite places to be at the moment, it's popular and it's fun. Moving on, updated racing checkpoints. Your feedback is invaluable to us and since we updated the checkpoint arrows in our races, we have been keeping eyes and ears open to learn your thoughts about them. So they have made the green shine of the arrows slightly more dim, so they are not so bright. And they have also changed the sound when you clear a checkpoint. That's really cool, I mean, we don't need that big of a sound to play every time we cross a checkpoint and let's be honest, it was about time they changed that. We will have a look at the new checkpoints very soon as well, at the same time that we review the new racetrack. Updated shops. All of the shops in the game have been updated to use the same interface which means you will now be able to sort items in a shop by type and color no matter what shop you visit. And it seems they closed the fashion barn in Silverglade Village but they moved the items to other shops around Jorvik and of course that you can also access those items if you visit the global store. Cafe menu updates. All of the cafes in Jorvik have also gotten an interface update as well as menu updates. The cafes are now split up into regular cafes, restaurants, bakeries, beach bars and ice cream parlors and will offer you different types of food depending on what type of cafe you are visiting. I don't really go to any of the cafes in the game, I think this is more for players that roleplay or if you want to have a meeting with your friends in the game or your club. You can always go to one of these places, sit down and play along I guess. But I will go and visit one of them just to see how the menu is currently showing. Moved horses. All of the generation to American quarter horses, American paint horses and Appaloosas can now be found at the horse market. And it seems that some big news are coming up next week about the market, so keep an eye out for that. And finally, the bonus shop at Morland Stables has a brand new item available to all players that became a Star Rider by one-time payment only. So this only works for players that bought the full game and don't have a current subscription going on. If you are one of those players like me, don't forget to go and check the bonus shop. And now for the big news coming up next week, I hope you are all ready to say hi to Talina and Campus. They are magical wild horses coming to the game next week. I don't even know what to say about these horses. I surely wasn't expecting a mermaid themed horse to pop up in the game anytime soon, but here they are and they look so pretty. After I saw this trailer for the first time, it got me thinking that maybe Star Stable has a huge surprise for us this summer and by that I mean a mermaid themed update and it could be new tack and gear or games at the beach in Fort Pinta. Maybe we will have mermaids at the beach for a while during the event, who knows. I'm just saying this guys, I don't know if this is what's going to happen, but it would be cool to see something like that in the game for the summer holidays. 
I think these horses will be very popular with the Star Stable community. Usually every wild horse is to be honest, but these are the first aquatic themed horses introduced to the game, so I am expecting a huge reaction from the crowd. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you are going to buy one of them or both. Ok guys, so since I am here at Starshine Ranch, let's have a look at the new race that Josh designed for us. And the new race is right over here under all the other races and it's called Josh's Western Race. And as you can see, you can play solo or with an opponent. Let's read the description and see if we can learn a little bit about the race. First jump over the obstacles, then go around the rows of barrels and finish by jumping over the obstacles again. And this was created by Starshine Ranch's owner, Western Rider Josh. I expect this race to be a bit of a challenge, so I'm gonna start by going solo, just to try the race. Ignore my fails during the race and let's hear the new checkpoint sound and how the new arrows look like. The sound is so much better now, it isn't loud or annoying anymore, I think it was a nice change and I am one of those players that like to play a game and listen to music while doing it, but I also like to keep the sound of the game on, the environment and the UI sound as well. Just to keep me on track of what I'm doing, I prefer to keep the game sounds on except the music. So this change is really cool and I have to say I am happy to see the annoying sound gone. Now the checkpoint arrows. They look less brighter than before, they seem to blend in a lot more with the races now, but I never had a problem with how the green arrows looked. I don't mind how they look like now or how they looked like before. It all comes down to player preferences though, so for the team to change how the arrows look like, it's probably because they received a lot of feedback about it asking to change the appearance. And I am all about for changes in the game, so why not? To me the checkpoints are small changes to the game, but all the small details that Star Stables keeps adding or changing, that's what makes the game great and nice to play, because the team is listening to feedback and they are answering and they are slowly changing and making the game better for us. And that is really good, you don't see that in every game. Ok, so I keep failing the race because I cannot concentrate, so let me try and do this without making a wrong turn or smashing my horse against the obstacles. Overall, the race is ok, but it's not perfect. It's really hard to control your horse, or at least it felt that way to me. It's a lot of sharp bends and the barrels are very close to each other. The only way for me to do this with a high level horse is by slow galloping all the way and canter around the barrels. I think that is the best way to do the race and that's exactly what I did. There is no way this race could be done in real life, at least it looks impossible to me to imagine someone making this race without taking every obstacle in front of them, but if this is a possible track to do in real life then you are a hell of a good rider. <laughs> ok, so I am currently at Charleheim now and I am at the cafe, because as I said before I don't really use cafes or restaurants in the game, that's more for people that like to roleplay or have time to roleplay, but I am curious to see how the menu is working. And the cafe is called Stable Box Cafe, which I think is a reference to Starbucks Cafe, which I think is pretty cool. While you are sitting down at the table, you can open your backpack to see your items. You also have three different camera views. Number one, which is this one. Number two, you can see from the top. And number three, it's a much closer view. And then you have the order menu, and that's your waitress over there. And it seems that you have pretty much everything. So we have cinnamon rolls, we have tiger cakes, we have biscuits, we have pies, and of course we have coffee, milk, black coffee, cappuccino, 
and glass of milk so this is a pretty cool menu guys if you guys like to role play or if you guys want to just sit down and have a chat with your club or with your friends in the game this is a perfect place for you to spend some time together but yes, yeah, so that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you about the menus at the cafe. So if you visit the Fort Pinta Beach, the cafe is going to be different. I think they have an ice cream shop over there. I think it's an ice cream. Or if you go to Jorvik City, you have another cafe over there. And maybe they will serve you different kinds of food and drinks. And now guys, let's go over to Moreland because I want to check the new item that is available at the bonus shop. And don't forget guys, this is only for players that have bought the game with only one payment. So the item is over here on top and it's called Cozy Camping Helmet. Let me turn the camera around so that you can see better. And the stats are Riding plus 4, Command plus 5 and Carrying plus 3, which is really good. And guys, this is super cool because these items are totally free and they come with stats. The helmet looks okay, I like the color blue and I think that it goes really well with my gear today even though it's a darker blue. The straps on the side look pretty nice. So this is a simple design for a helmet but it works really well with whatever you're wearing. All you have to do is find the gear to match the color of the helmet. Or if you don't really care about aesthetics just, just use it however you want. Okay, so that's it for today's video guys, thank you so much for watching once again, I will post my next video on Saturday and I hope to see you there again. Have a good week guys and I will see you soon.